Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is my Evil West, Evil Difficulty, No Healing walkthrough. This is Chapter 7, it's called Smoke and Mirrors. And again, guys, I have failed you in my conquest, <laughs> in my quest for patience. This is another video where I will not be doing every fight, no damage. Because it has a boss fight in it, and if you heard the previous video, you will know that I do not agree with the bosses in Evil West, and I do not agree with the boss design that this company makes. I think they are always bad. And I wish that Shinji Mikami and his team could teach these people how to make satisfying fights, but alas, they seem incapable. And I'm really tempted to make a graphic, guys, that shows you like the most damage you can do to a boss as a visual representation on their bar, and show like the greatest action games ever made, taking off nuclear chunks, and think about it guys, think about like a full combo with the scythe on Ninja Gaiden that takes nearly half HP off a boss. Think about a distorted real impact in Devil May Cry 4 that takes off almost an entire fourth, sometimes a third of a boss's HP if you do it right. You know, think about God Hand when you do the Shaolin uh, fist technique and it takes off like 50 to 40% off a boss. Think about these numbers guys, these absurd numbers that you can do if you play well and you know what you're doing. And then if I showed you the most damage you can do in like one hit on this game, it's it's not even an inch on a bar that's that's a meter long. <laughs> and it's just really funny to me. It really is. Because if I was terrible at the game, I would take the criticism of I'm playing incorrectly and I need to optimize my damage. But I am playing rather well at this game, if I do say so myself. And I know people who are playing this game who are also very, very good players. And... If they're struggling to find damage when they've found damage in games far better than this and far worse, it just makes me wonder why it is so gated in such a rigid manner and such a an awkward fashion. But I like this level a lot. I think the level is really fun. I think the boss ruins it, unfortunately. But the level has some interesting stuff and this is one of the moments where you shoot the glamour pods and I like this particular puzzle. I think this is way better than the minecart ones. And if you come up here, there's going to be a new enemy, I think. So this is the explosive leech monster. That is, of course, not his name, because I haven't looked in the beastie area like a scrub. But this creature here dies in one bullet from your rifle. And this is one of the areas where flying take a very strict and rigid stance on how they want their game to work. In most games, those enemies, because they're combustible and they blow up, if you shot one of them near their friends, it would be a big explosion and they'd all die. This game doesn't do that, and I don't know why. <laughs> so, it's really bad, guys. If you group those guys up and you shoot one, because you stand still to shoot, they will all be near you and they'll start blowing up. You have to shoot them all individually and it gets awkward as fuck. I don't get it, personally. To me, it kind of feels like a bad choice. But... I respect that they wanted to do it in a different manner, and it gives me an opportunity to use the guns, which I really enjoy. And I think that they're an enemy that adds something to the fights too, because they put pressure on the player without shooting them. And there are a couple of enemies, like the flying enemies, like the priest later on with the gun, and the humans. When they shoot you, you almost stand no chance of, of doing anything about it. And I find it really, really sad. Because on hard, I thought it was the perfect amount of time for them to hesitate before they shot you. But on evil, it's way quicker. And there's a there's a checkpoint later on, on one of the final missions, where when you get controlled, there's about four humans in front of you, and sometimes the, he shoots the frame you fade in, and if you don't mash roll, you just get shot before you can move. <laughs> and it's stuff like that, you know, that makes me think that, did they really play it? Did they really test it? And it makes me wonder what perspective they did test it from, because it makes me think that people just look at taking damage as part of the game. And to me, you should design your game so every fight can be done without being hit. And that might sound ridiculous to somebody, but to me, that should be industry standard. And it, it, it shows the issue with the industry. There's a huge issue with our industry, and that is that a lot of the time the people who are making the games, the people who are designing the games, aren't necessarily good at the games. And the people whose jobs it is to play the games, they themselves might not necessarily be that good at the games. And it's one of those weird things where I don't think that you have to be a, a Michelin star chef to, to work as a waiter in a, in a restaurant. But I think if you know something about food, it's going to help, right? 
And if you are a Michelin star chef and you waiter or you help in a kitchen or you help in a supermarket or something, I think that's fucking awesome. Because for me, if I was a games tester, I would want to absolutely put this game to its limits and I would like to share all the things that I found and then the developers could look at them and go uh, we kind of like it that way we won't change that or we didn't notice that we'll absolutely look at that and maybe address it because I feel like just because someone disagrees with something doesn't necessarily mean it should be changed and that's 100% in regarding my criticisms as well just because I think something should be a certain way doesn't mean it should but I need to hear a compelling argument as to why it is the way it is and I've interacted with developers a lot, guys. I've interacted with a lot of people creatively. And people get very defensive. And a lot of the times, I don't think they're willing to listen to the criticism. I don't think they're willing to look at it and go, one second, let's take a step back. Is there any validity in this? Because the big thing that you find is, even if you go on a YouTuber's page and you say that something's wrong with their video, even if it's objective, they will say, oh, that's intentional. And the difficulty here is, sometimes it is, and if you say that, you sound like you're being defensive and you, f you sound like you're, you're on the attack when you're not. So it's really difficult to say that something is intentional. And I come across it all the time, but I wish we could get to a point where that wasn't the initial response. And a good example here for people who, who've heard this story before is Bluepoint. So Bluepoint were the people responsible for doing the Uncharted collection. And they designed Brutal Difficulty, which was a difficulty where you died in... I think it was two shots, wasn't it? One bullet put you to damage, the second bullet killed you. There were certain bullets that killed you instantly in the first game. But there was a sequence in that game where you're, you're on the back of a jeep and you can't hide. And it's completely random. There's no fun to be had. It's not even a video game. It's just, it's hungry hippos and, and you're not in control of the hippo. So when you do it, it has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the game letting you win. Which, to me, sounds counterintuitive to video games, but that's kind of where modern gaming's going, because nobody wants to play games anymore. Everybody just wants to win and get trophies and patted on the back and told that they've got a big dick and they're a nice person and they're going to be rich and happy. And I think that's fucking silly. You used to be able to earn that shit, and I believe in a meritocracy more so than anything else, so if you don't earn it, you get no respect from me. But that sequence was garbage and it was broken. And a friend of mine sent a message to the, the designer at Blue, Prun Blue Point, sorry, on Twitter. And the designer said that it was working as intended. That was the way it was meant to be. And to me, I always saw that response as a very defensive, very childish and immature response. I would rather them tell me to fuck off than for them to say that, because that, to me, takes less effort. And the bit that really bothers me from a design perspective is that he could have said... Yeah, some sequences when we tested them were a bit ridiculous, but we wanted the difficulty to be absolutely absurd, you know? If he'd have said that, I would have kind of gone, I don't agree with it, but I get it. Because some difficulties are like that, you know? I, no More Heroes recently. A lot of people have been telling me No More Heroes, the difficulties are meant to be miserable. They're meant to be boring, they're meant to be bad, they're meant to be unresponsive, they're meant to be shit, they're meant to be lame. It's like, why? Why would you make that, dude? Can you imagine? It's like giving yourself cancer. Why would you choose that? I just don't get it. I, I wanted it to be bad. Why? Is there something wrong with your fucking brain? Like, <laughs> I just don't get that. I can't understand that personally. This fight's really fun too. This is another encounter where there's not much room to navigate. But compared to some encounters later on, there's a lot. So this is a really good opportunity, this, of learning what to do against this monster. And this monster is quite unique. Because he has that shockwave, so if you get close to him and you beat him up, you can't get guaranteed combos and guaranteed kicks on him, because every so often he'll do the shockwave, and I haven't found a way to stop it up close outside of using the crippling rod or using the super move. And I've got lots of answers for things, like, for instance, if you use the flamethrower, guys, that we just picked up, flamethrower is one of those weapons that uh, certain reviewers say are not that useful, why would you use it? Those people are stupid. The flamethrower is really, really strong. And it's been balanced in such a way that makes it frustrating to use because when you put it on, you can't quickly swap off into other weapons. And I really disagree with that, personally. However, they've done that to limit your ability because it's that good. Not only can the flamethrower put flame on people, which will tick them for damage, it also, when upgraded, enables you to get 30% extra damage on flaming targets, which is a huge buff. And then the best part is that it can actually stunlock certain monsters and keep them out of doing animations. 
and it works on boss-like characters like this monster here. So experimenting with the flamethrower is really, really good. But you need to be aware that you move slower, your sensitivity is slower, and you cannot quickly turn it off unless you press the button to take it off. And I am not that comfortable with quickly taking the, the weapon off because none of the other weapons work like it. So at first it feels really jarring, really unresponsive and really frustrating. But the co more comfortable you get, the better you'll be. Because you can press the same button you press to put it on to get it away very quickly and it does work. And in my opinion, adding the flamethrower to the start of your combos is the best way to play this game. Because it guarantees that whatever you do next will have additional damage. And you need to think about that, guys. When you get superhuman mode and you start slamming into people, think about it. If before you activate it, you set them on fire and then you start doing it, you're going to inherit those buffs. You're going to get that damage. It's the same with anything else. If you really like using the shotgun, set them on fire, then use the shotgun. You know? Things like this, this swapping between the tools to get these damage stacks, that's going to be where a lot of the damage is. And even if you do that, you know those bosses that I've complained about? They still don't die quickly because they wanted you to suffer, it seems. I like this location here as well. It reminds me of that level in Resistance 2 where you take on those invisible predator-inspired monsters. It also reminds me of the when you're going to Tommy's Dam in The Last of Us, which is kind of interesting. This sequence here as well, don't do what I'm doing right now. Uh, or if you hold the button anyway, I'm not holding the button, that's good to see. You only need a single frame of flames to take these down. But when I first was doing this, I was burning all my fuel. And the reason you don't want to do that is because the cooldown on the flamethrower, because it is so powerful, is really long. And you want to have as much flamethrower as possible because it's really good at interrupting what enemies do. Especially the standard enemies. When a bunch of standard enemies are running at you guys, if you flame them with the flamethrower, they will stop and they will flinch. And you can do the same thing with a Gatling gun when you get that later on. If you shoot somebody with a Gatling gun, it will interrupt what they do. It's so good. Do not sleep on these tools, guys. I know they're awkward because they don't work as well as they should. And I have a fix for that as well, which if you ever hear this, developers, I hope you do. Instead of making it so we can't quickly swap away from the Gatling gun and the flamethrower unless we press the button to put them on. Instead of that as a design choice, why not make it so that we can't evade when we're using it? Because there's a game that came out on the PS2 called God of War 2, directed by somebody before he invented fatherhood. And in that game, there is a weapon called the Barbarian's Hammer, and it is incredibly powerful. It is the most powerful weapon in the game, but you cannot evade. You cannot evade when you use that weapon, and it makes it very limited. People came up with strategies to get around that using a bow, but we won't talk about that. Imagine the idea, guys, of a really powerful weapon where you're forced to stand your ground. Pretty cool, right? And then for the people who like to be dexterous and like to swap buttons quickly and swap between all the weapons, you enable a player to cancel between all the weapons and look really cool while using the flamethrower. However, if you want to exclusively use the flamethrower, you have to use it intelligently. I think that that would just make the game flow better and make it feel more responsive. But that's not what you've got, guys, so you can roll when you've got the flamethrower on. And it seems like they want you to use the flamethrower to burn webbing later on, which I think is another really bad design choice which I'm going to talk about. But kill the enemies here, guys. I'm going to take damage on a fight coming up, which is kind of sad. But it involves leeches, and I didn't know what the checkpoint is, because the more I've been recording this, the more I've been realising that the checkpoints every so often are really, really bad. And it, and it sucks, too. I just, again, I do apologise, folks, if it seems like I've just gone from, like, this game is great, I love this game, do this, do that, to this is bad, this is bad, that's bad, this is bad, this is bad, but... This is what happens when you bang on a game, you know. When you bang on a game and you try hard to see how far you can push it, you, you come across all the holes. And it turns into a bit of a cheese grater sometimes. And I'd just like to preface this by saying I love this game and I still think it's great. I think it's worth your time and I think it's worth the money they're asking for. And that's speaking of somebody that got a key for it. You know, I got this for free. I would still buy this. And I would recommend you do too, you know. Because it's worth your time and I find it to be very enjoyable. I recently bought Miles Morales on PC because I'm a big fan of the Spider-Man game that Insomniac made and I thought it was shit. I thought the whole thing was just like a really lame DLC that focused on all the things that made the first game unenjoyable. I really didn't like it. Casually, it's probably a great game, but for what I want and for what I enjoy, I, I just thought it was pretty blasé and, and, and terrible in many ways. 
I think this game is 50 times more enjoyable than Miles Morales. But you ask these reviewers who are shitting on this game, they'll give Miles Morales a 10 out of 10, say it's fucking great, and then they'll talk about how you walked around an aquarium with some fucking ex-girlfriend and got bored the whole time, but they didn't get bored, they thought it was gameplay, they thought it was great, you know? I found that game to be very uninteresting, and far worse than anything in the first game. Uh, it, to me, it feels like that game was designed by interns who designed the DLC for the first game because the fights didn't have any elegance, they didn't have any grace, they were too big, they were too long, some of them had weird checkpoints, and the bosses had these auto-fucking counters that damaged you. Like, where did that come from? It doesn't make any sense. I don't want to talk about Miles Morales. I'm just trying to make a point here. Evil West is a great game, but it has holes too. And the checkpoint one is one of those that really hurts me because I think before every encounter, it should checkpoint. I don't think it should checkpoint before a conversation. I don't think it should checkpoint before you do some platforming. I don't think it should checkpoint before you shoot two pustules, go into a fucking room, break something, and then start a fight. You know, like it's... I don't get how that still happens. It makes me wonder if the people who are in charge of the scripting events and the triggers are not the people that understand that players don't want to listen to an unskippable cutscene before they do a boss fight where they can fail in five seconds. You know, it's... And it, and it seems really pedantic, doesn't it? You know, if you're a person who plays a game once... Oh, this is that spawn protection, by the way. You can only do damage to these monsters when you hop across, but then there's no room to evade them. And unless you just zap them all, which is what I do quite like doing, you tend to trade with the leeches here, because you can't see them in the grass, and that one gets me right there. So there was the damage, guys. I am sorry. But I'm not restarting, because getting hit by this is lame. Especially when these monsters have so much HP. This fucking enemy should go down in one headshot. I don't care who you are or what you think. An enemy that's designed is to fire a bunch of explosives that hop around and you can't see them because the fucking level design <laughs> is not a good enemy. And they, they love this enemy too. And I, I don't like that. I prefer the flying enemy over this particular one. I think the flying enemy is way more fair and way more interesting. And I do think that the game was, was kind of missing an enemy that puts pressure on you like the flying enemy like this enemy and right now they've just introduced a new one so they can't go too crazy with the new one and then later on they introduce a man on a gatling gun and he's really fun guys because he's a mile away and when you aim at him and shoot him sometimes your bullets don't hit him that's a good mechanic isn't it a guy who shoots a gatling gun at you while you're fighting several other enemies and you can't even effectively counter him when you aim at him and shoot him <laughs> he's my favorite enemy in the game him he's the first one i'd delete along with the boss that's coming up here. But before this boss, there's a big fight, and I don't recommend using any of your tools here, guys. You want to go into the boss fight with full batteries and a full crippling rod. If you can do that, I would even say a full flamethrower, because you can do a lot of damage with a flamethrower against the worms. But I think this is a bit of an homage, this to Shadow Warrior 3. I don't know if it's the same dragon that, like, Lo Wang killed. You'll have to tell me in the comments, guys, if you're, like, a super fan. But this fight's really fun. So you've got a ton of these exploding leeches. And then there's going to be the guy that casts the leeches that follow you. There's about three or four of these dudes that turn up. I'm just going to shock them into a combo and then probably shotgun them. And then you'll notice they, they spawn these three enemies with the blades to put pressure on you. And this here is a good room with a lot of different problems happening right now that you have to solve. This to me is when Evil West is at its best. And if you're a player that wants to just do nothing but air juggles on one enemy, you're not going to enjoy evil difficulty. You're not really going to enjoy the game because as much as you can do cool things with combos and air combos, if you do that during a fight like this, you're going to get hit. You're going to die. You have to play smart. And smart in this game involves choosing your damage, countering accordingly, and then getting out and getting some space. And it's a real breakthrough moment when you realize that you don't necessarily want to be going for all these fancy strings and thinking it's always your turn because it's not. And there's a game called God Hand that I talk about a lot. It's a very good game. In that game, the moment you realize that running forward past enemies is one of the most valid ways to create space to get out of a bad situation, once you do that, you have a watershed moment of understanding the game on a much stronger level than you did before. And this game's the exact same. Knowing when to stick in there, knowing when to get out is really important. And if you stay in too long, you'll lose. But if you do it just right, you'll come out on top. And it'll be a lot of fun too. Because this game, it shares a lot of Doom Eternal in that. 
In Doom Eternal, if you stand your ground, you'll die. In Doom Eternal, you need to move. Moving is your weapon, and everything else is just the accoutrements to victory. This game is no different. It just doesn't have as many tools, and as, and as you know, that game is immaculately designed. There are very few things that I can really critique about Doom Eternal. This game isn't as good as that, but it's a damn fine effort from a very capable team. But this boss fight is dog shit, and I hate it. So, Parasiter. What happens here is this boss has two moves. The first one is a projectile it will fire at you that has a crit spot you can shoot, and then the second one is three head slams. All of this is easy to dodge, but it introduces a bunch of nonsense later on that makes it way more difficult, and because it has so much HP, you have to shoot it for 200 fucking years, and it's just boring and lame. The whole thing just kills my will to live. So... You can use your flamethrower, you can use your punchers, you can use your shotgun, you can use all the tools you've got. I like to essentially just kind of kite it a little bit and shoot, and I like to build up everything I've got and deal some damage. And then once you kill one of the arms, you'll be attacked by the main worm. I say one of the arms, it's like it's children, isn't it? Or it's, I don't even know, it's a weird tail or something. And he'll do the same move, and then when you kill the other arm, he'll do another move, and then you'll get an opportunity to damage the boss. And then you do this like three times and you win. But it escalates and it introduces adds as well. So you know those explosive leeches that we saw earlier? Those guys are going to turn up and put pressure on you while you're being attacked by two different things at the same time. And the whole thing just feels like shit. It's really bad. Luckily, there's a lot of healing in this fight. It's almost like they realised that they didn't design it very well. So they gave you a fuck ton of healing. Uh, this right here is the opposite of what you want to do. If you stand in the spawn of that move, you are going to probably die. I don't know how I survived that. I got very lucky. Ideally there, you don't want to stand where it spawns. You want to run away from it and you want to kite it. It's not difficult to dodge, but I put myself in the one space I didn't want to be. And it ended up punishing me. And you can always tell when I'm not enjoying something, guys, because I end up doing stuff like that. Like, if I liked this fight, I would have done no damage and I would have shown you the greatest strategy in the world. But I just find this fight to be garbage. And then he does this where he drops a bunch of rocks and they preempt you. So you have to run around and take chip damage off shit that doesn't touch you. And then you go back to the exact same phase you've just done. Fun. It's just boring. And now, there is this eggshell that's going to spawn enemies. It looks a bit like a critter egg. And all you do here is if you bait the head thrust, it will destroy the egg without you attacking it. Or you can shoot the monsters. Or you can use the monsters to, to get some stuff, but... This kind of isolates all the shortcomings of Evil West. The camera, the controls, the dodge, the iframes, the hitboxes, the enemies, the pacing, the HP, the balance. All of this is... tedious, for lack of a better word. And I'm looking forward to seeing somebody who finds a really good strategy for this fight. Because then I'll just steal their strategy and I'll never do this again. Because I have no interest in ever fighting this boss again. I've killed it twice, and both times I thought it was one of the most miserable things I've done. But you'll have to tell me, guys, did you enjoy this one? Because someone enjoyed this, you know that. There's that woman that eats her own shit, I always mention her. I thought this was miserable. And now you shoot the mouth, and then now things get even more hectic. So, now he's going to have enemies, both tentacles, and the rocks falling down in, in certain intervals. And it just, it's just too much. It's too much, and it wasn't fun the first time. I think this should be two cycles, this, and he dies. I just don't see the point in doing it this much. And then I use my special, thinking I'm going to do tons of damage and make a fucking difference, and I don't make any difference, really. It's just a waste of my special. If I came back and did this again, I could definitely do it cleaner. I could definitely be more effective, but it's just not a very good fight. The shotgun is really good, though. That seemed to be a nice chunk. But do you really want to do this? I just... I'm real bad nowadays, me guys. When I get to a fight that I don't like, I just don't want to do it. I feel like a, an entitled little brat. I just I just get that feeling, you know, you're like, I'm gonna... I don't want to do this, you know? I want to do something else. And I fought two grads in Metal Gear Rising for 20 hours. And I've only spent about 30 minutes fighting this boss. But I'd rather fight those fucking grads, I would. Because I just don't like this fight. Like, the grad fight's bullshit, and it's cheap. And it's badly designed. This is just shit. 
And again, if you come here New Game Plus, I bet you can dumpster this boss. But instead, we're just doing this. But here's a question to anyone that's made it this far. What would you do to the bosses in Evil West to make them a bit more enjoyable? Hell, you might be somebody that thinks they're really fun. And if so, please explain. You know, please please give us some counter-arguments to why you like the bosses, because I'd love to know. Like, some people really like endurance fights. They like fighting for a long period of time. Maybe you're one of those, like, Moab runners, and you, you just enjoy, like, nine-hour excursions. You know, like those people that beat Dark Souls bosses with broken weapons on New Game Plus 7, and it takes them, like, 15 hours to do it? Maybe you're one of those guys. But I think there's a simple psychology behind it, me. Watch this HP bar when I shoot the main boss here. Next time I shoot the boss, see that? See the damage I did to the boss? It was like a micro-inch. I say micro-inch, like a micro-millimeter. It was so small, you barely saw it move. And I think psychologically, when you see yourself doing really tiny damage, the damage it does to you mentally is far stronger than any other damage. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy that shit, boss. And you take care now.